So this is Springwood Dairy. It's about a 200 head dairy operation here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And right now we're standing in the middle of a 40 acre civil pasture planting that we did one year ago. So as you can see, the trees are, some of the trees are popping out of the tubes and they have one growing season on them so far. This farm is completely in grass, so it's a completely 100% grass fed dairy and they sell to Organic Valley. So you notice that he was able to move through the rows of trees to unroll those bales. And that was something that was very important with this layout that we did, was we wanted these trees to be individually protected rather than having poly wire connecting the whole row because he wanted to be able to come through with his machinery. And it's, it's a large dairy, so it's pretty mechanized. So you want to be able to move through these rows to be able to unroll bales and do whatever else that they needed to do, like mowing. We've been organic since 1996 for certified, and then we've been whole grass, no grain for the last 10 years since 2012. And uh, I'm fourth generation on the farm, and uh, we it seemed like trees, silvopasture was just a good fit for our operation. We're not tilling the pastures, not working them up. We did set them up so it's convenient for uh, the equipment sizes we have if we want to mow or clip pastures. We're one year in on this, on these particular trees, and then we have another project that's two years in. We notice a big difference in that second year on the tree sizes, and uh, we're pretty uh, pretty happy with what we see so far. And yeah. we're actually starting to see some shade benefit on the two-year-old trees. That's the biggest immediate benefit. Yeah. I think we'll see benefit with. Uh, with the fodder that the the uh, trees will put down, like the pod on the honey locust and the persimmon fruit, that'll be the immediate benefit. But there'll be whole biological cycle benefits as well. Right. That, and of course, of course, uh, helping with carbon sequestration and keeping the water going to the bay cleaner. <laughs> So this right here is a honey locust, and we have quite a few black locusts on this site as well. We've, our three main species on this site are honey locust, black locust, and persimmon. And our black locusts, they're intended as our fast-growing shade species that are gonna provide us shade earlier than the other species, and that's why we plant a good bit of black locust. And this is one of our faster-growing honey locusts. About half of our trees are honey locusts because what we're wanting off of these is the pods for dropping in the fall and winter when livestock need extra energy from the sugar in these honey locust pods. So right here we have our six foot planter shelter and this is the basis around which we do almost all of our plantings. This is what we found to work very well for us. So it's a six foot shelter, so there's a plastic tube and then there's a fiberglass stake on the inside. And the fiberglass stake has a lot of flex to it. So you can see it'll flex mighty well. Um, there is a limit to the flexibility of it. At some point it will snap and a cow can push it to that limit. Um, so that's why we need additional protection and that's where the barbed wire comes in. I don't love the barbed wire, um, but it does work. My preference is when we run electric fencing along these tree shelters. And again, because these are plastic tubes and fiberglass stakes, the whole thing is, a, is an electrical insulator. So what I prefer is when we run a piece of poly wire along these tree shelters, just right along the whole row, and we just connect it with these big twist ties right to this lower um, the slower spot, or you can connect to other places. We can, be, we can get creative with these, depending on how much access you need. Um, 
that's the easiest and it's also the most effective. If we have a hot electric fence along these tree shelters, I'm confident that the, tree, that the trees are gonna be safe because the cows are gonna respect that hot electric fencing. Um, barbed wire is a little bit more variable in how much the cattle will respect it. So this is a black locust. A quarter of our planting here was black locust. And the reason that we planted the black locust is for fast shade. On a well-drained area like this, very few trees can compete with a black locust in terms of the, how quick they are to put out shade um, and to just grow vertically, right? Um, and they also, they'll fix nitrogen, uh, so they're bringing more fertility into the soil. They have a good shade profile too, and what I mean by that is that they have um, a lot of light that, uh, that they allow to go through the canopy and still get to the forages beneath. So they don't block out 100% of the light. There's still a lot of um, forage growth underneath them. And that's one of the big things that we're looking for is we want a, to strike a balance. We want to strike a balance between providing shade and providing other benefits like uh, fertility or fodder that the trees are dropping. And we still want to have good forage production, right? Because um, that's, that's the backbone of, of these farms is forage production. If you are in a wide open pasture without any trees, these cool season forages, and that's what, that's what we have here is cool season forages, they don't like to grow during the summer, right? So in the summer, they go into what's called the summer slump and they aren't, they aren't growing as fast. So when we have trees, we are um, cooling the forages. We're not just reducing the, the heat stress on livestock, but we're also reducing heat stress on our cool season forages. So our forages can actually grow better into the summer than without shade. Um, and so there's a, there's a Goldilocks zone there where right in the middle of not too, uh, not too much shade, not too little shade, and um, that's what we're shooting for. Okay, so let's take a look at this persimmon tree. Again, about a quarter of our trees on this site are persimmons. So this right here is a persimmon tree. Um, now we put these in here for their fruit production, right? So they're a nice tree in that they, um, they tend to be pretty small trees um, compared to the honey locust or especially compared to the black locust. They don't grow fast. So while, that, while we're not gonna get shade off these quick at all, they're gonna drop fruit and they're gonna drop fruit very regularly. Their fruit is really good too. Um, there's a lot of sugar in the fruit It'll drop maybe from like September through November. Like that might be your, your typical drop window, maybe into December. Some varieties will drop later. Um, so it's a little bit earlier than our honey locusts. Our honey locusts are, tend to be more of like November through January that their drop window is. And um, persimmons will tend to be a little bit earlier. Um, although we can have some dropping late into the season. So it's a really good complement to honey locusts. Probably the best way that I could summarize the benefits that we're gonna see here is farm resiliency. 